Okay, greeting to the name of the Most High. Here we are. We're going again and uh, broadcasting to you live from the Outer Banks. North Carolina, 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 Carolina. Anyway, so we're out here. Let me... Um, uh, I just feel like the ocean has sapped me out. For the last two days, I've just been uh, sleepy because I've been by the ocean with the sound of the waves or are right there, and um, we're out on the 4x4 four four beach, which is um, which is nine miles, it takes nine miles of sand, and then driving around these puddles to get out here, but um, it's well worth it getting out here, but ever since I've been here, I feel like I've had this sleep deficit back in New Mexico that I've owed. And I'm kind of catching up now. I'm hoping to get a little bit more active. I've had that. Um, so here's the thing. Okay? Here's the thing we got to do. All right, let's just start right off with uh, John 17. Uh, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may be behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou hast loved me before the foundation of the world. So what do you think that means? I don't think anyone's going to preach on that anytime soon. Uh, before the foundation of the world, the kingdom of God is within you. Let me now read you an email that I received. Um, this is going to be a spiritual podcast, so if, if, you know, if you're not inclined, um, you won't understand what I'm talking about. If uh, okay, I well, you okay? Very nice, very nice. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting into it now, but I must find this email um, by one of our listeners and friends, and also, uh, you know, I didn't mean for you to respond right away by kicking in a couple of bucks to the bandwidth. You know, right then when I said something, it's more like just kind of like if you download a lot of stuff or whatever, just sort of, you know, it, it's kind of like the honor system. You know, you just do what you want to do. I, I can't keep bringing it up because, it, like I say, it doesn't matter that much to me. It's just something I think that's the right thing to do. Um, okay, so I'm trying to find it. How do I find an email? I, I get so much junk mail. It's just completely distracting to me. And um, it's blocking me from getting, here it is, uh, no, oh, this is, okay, she wrote a really good thing, this sister in Christ, um, and, you know, I thought to myself, I want to read it, so while I'm looking, Okay, here it is. I found it. Okay? So don't get mad at me. Here we go. And if there's, you know, if this is a terrible sound or technically something's wrong with it, I'm sorry. Okay, Luke 13, 18 uh, through 30. Uh, the door, our hearts, to the kingdom, the tree of life. These are in parentheses. Mm. Oh, dear, her, her words. Uh, has been shut and we are left in outer darkness, or Satan's world in, in Babylon. Let's go through it again. The door, our hearts. Okay, this is from Luke 13, 18 through 30. And so we're just summarizing it, okay? The door, and this is what she's writing. The door, in parentheses, our hearts, to the kingdom, in parentheses, the tree of life, has been shut and we are left in outer darkness, Satan's world, or Babylon. The door, our hearts, to the kingdom, the tree of life, has been shut, and we are left in, dark, in outer darkness, or Satan's world. The door to our heart, the door to the kingdom, is our heart. The tree of life is in our heart, in, in our soul. And that door has been shut, okay? And we are left in the outer darkness, which is this world. It's called the outer darkness. That's her, that's, she's, that, that's her spiritual, that's the rhema. Okay, Rima from those verses. Okay, let's go to the next one. The kingdom of heaven is within. That is Luke 17, 20, and 21. 
Those who do not find the kingdom of heaven within will live in the realm of our outer darkness. And I quote again, Each individual person who has been called by Jesus Christ is a potential garden and tree for the kingdom of heaven. Only Jesus Christ can open the door up to the tree of life within. Up to the tree of life within. We have to strive to enter by the narrow gate when he calls us because many will try later and cannot enter. Jesus comes to our house. Our body is the house. Suddenly, and if we do not respond when he knocks, later he will want to enter. Uh, we, later we will want to enter, but Jesus will say, I do not know you. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. These are people who have been leaders in the church and Sunday morning churchgoers who have eaten and drunk in Jesus' presence, verse 26, but they chose to live in the satanic external realm of doing church rather than becoming the church, ecclesia, uh, the called out ones. Entering the kingdom is not a group event, it is an individual choice and walk, and those who endure to the end will be saved. Behold, I am coming quickly, Revelation 22, 20, 12 through 21. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed are they that do his co commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life within, remember, and enter through the gates, your heart, remember, into the city, we are the new Jerusalem, remember, because outside outer darkness are the dogs, uh, i.e. carnival barkers, you know, the, the, the people out there selling their smack and whatnot. Many are called and few are chosen, is the finishing comment. Now that was, I guess that was an email to me, and that's all it says. It doesn't, there's no editorializing here. That's just the download. Let's go through it one more time, just in a different way. The door our hearts to the kingdom, the tree of life, has been shut and we are left in the outer darkness, which is Satan's world or Babylon, Luke 13, 18 through 30. The kingdom of heaven is within, Luke 17, 20 and 21. Those who do not find the kingdom of heaven within will live in the realm of outer darkness, which is Satan's world or Babylon. Each individual person who has been called by Jesus Christ is a potential garden and tree for the kingdom of heaven. Only Jesus Christ can open the door up to the tree of life within. We have to strive to enter in by the narrow gate when he calls us because many will try later and cannot enter. Jesus comes to our house, our body is the house. And suddenly, uh, and suddenly, and if we do not respond when he knocks, later we will want to enter, but Jesus will say, I do not know you, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. These are the people who have been leaders in the church and Sunday morning churchgoers who have eaten and drunk in Jesus' presence, uh, verse 26, but have chosen to live in the satanic external realm of doing church rather than becoming the church, ecclesia, or the called out ones. Entering the kingdom is not a group event, it is an individual choice or walk, and those who endure to the end will be saved. Behold, I am coming quickly, Revelation 22, 12 through 21. Blessed are they who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life within, and enter through the gates, your heart, and the city, uh, and into the city, we are the new Jerusalem. Okay, let's get that clear. We are the new Jerusalem. Because outside, outer darkness, are the dogs, which are the carnival barkers of religion. Many are called and few are chosen. And I thought that summed up the last 12 years here pretty well. Nothing mean, you know, it's, I don't want people to try to enter in and not be allowed to go in. It's just... That was a warning that Jesus gave us, not Zeph Daniel, not our friend Deborah here who wrote that, not anyone else, but Jesus himself gave that warning to us. And he said, you know, it, when I call, you better be ready because, you know, later you might not be able to, to find me. It's just like in the Old Testament where, 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 where Yahweh is, Jehovah, Yahweh is going, you know, those, I'm just going to sum it up over all the Old Testament. Uh, those who've really rejected me will, will one day want to seek me, but I will be nowhere to be found. They'll seek me, but they shall not find me. They'll need me one day, but I won't be there because they rejected me when I, was, when I was present. They didn't want it. So I won't be there when they, 
when they suddenly want me when it's convenient for them. And I think that's, after all, fair. If you've been warned and had a free warning, the, the, Jesus is the Lord. So the point is, is that, of course, he's going to have the same word in the New Testament as, like, you know, the Son in the Old Testament is the Father, and the Father and Son are one, New, which means, let me download more Rima to you, the New T- Testament and the Old Testament are one because the Father and the Son, i.e. John 17, are one, which is why I read that in the beginning. And we are one in that. And that really, us, you know, the Ecclesia, um, become the new Jerusalem. We no longer have need of an external realm like we have here, a 3D realm. There's no more need for that. There's no more need for light from the sun or any, any other source or power. We have that contained within us, whatever that means. It's a mystery, okay? But... but but that's really the breakdown of it. We're not external to the situation. Just like the external world that we live in, if we choose you know, to be external beings and live in the external realm and I guess bide our time there uh, and make it work for us uh, and make the church an external exercise and make the um, music an external exercise, and make the material world a, an icon or a, a point. Or a, 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 you know, so many people believe, you know, unfortunately, in the, in, the, you know, in the religion of Christianity, they believe that they're going to a place in 3D called the New Jerusalem, which is this cube floating in space that they're going to go to, and it's all going to be this wonderful city where they get to be happy humans wandering around. Uh, just like they are now, only um, they're not going to die. That is the ridiculous. Not only ridiculous, but it's a lie. On top of being ridiculous. And of course, God is not ridiculous. He is not the author, author of confusion. He's not the author of idiocy. You know, he's profound. He's sublime. He's a lot of things, but he isn't, he isn't a comic book. And this is not, pl- you know, um, playtime here. This is not, you know, just fun and games and, you know, and, and humans know everything. Uh, they don't know everything. And they certainly don't, have failed on this test of the spirit, which is, you know, what is the goal of all this? What is the point of all this? Where's the door Jesus knocks? The heart, right? Where's the tree of life? Within. What, what happens when that's activated? You know, that DNA is activated. Eternal life. What, what is that, the New Jerusalem? What is the point of all of it, the New Jerusalem? In my older age, I'm getting a little sloppy with some of those syllables. Yikes. The New Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Salem. Jerusalem. Which is the center of the world. The center of the world is what? Is your heart. Right? Because it's your world, it's your heart. If you like the heart, but since we're not a collective, I'm going to deal with you and me as individuals. There's no collective salvation. There isn't like kumbaya, we all go forth to the throne and we're all saved and get on the spaceship together and go to the New Jerusalem and escape this realm and live happily ever after as these eternal beings. First of all, what are you going to do? You see, humans still think there's going to be something to do. To do. Something to be, to go... Uh, see they're so in love with this external lie of a realm called Babylon which is simply the external realm they're so in love with that that they cannot imagine that the real life the real reality, the reality is, we call it within now but it's in the spiritual dimension it's in another dimension, it's not here it isn't the sun and the stars and the moon and the oceans And there's a lot of beautiful things here but that's not the, but that's passing, it's transitory, it's fading. It's not permanent. We're not permanent here, and it also isn't permanent. You know, it's here for a purpose. And I believe that most people in the world keep thinking in material or worldly terms, and, you know, the, the mistake they make is that the external realm, Babylon, you know, the lie, is the truth, and what's within is, is a murky 
unknowable thing. And so they bond to that which is external, and they miss the point that the Lord is knocking on the door internally, or in the spiritual realm, but it's within us. That the external body was never meant to live forever, and that the glorified body of that is, is um, taught they teach it's kind of like your body now, only with supernatural properties that won't decay. Uh, so they they see it. I've look. I've seen the, the 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 chick tracks and all the other stuff depicting all this. Their understanding is is nil because they see it as this external realm where we're going to be living happily ever after. I don't know what the heck we're going to be doing there, but I suppose we'll be hanging out with the lamb that's lying down with the lion and having a one big picnic that goes on for. 10 million years. I, I'm sorry, that's unacceptable. I wouldn't even want to go, look, hey, hello, I wouldn't even want to go there. If it's more of this, I don't want it. But you'd be surprised how many people want this and they want to go on and they're going to hold on to this desperately and, um, you know, the, 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 you know, that's it. But anyway, so Jesus' warning, let's get back to that now, very important. Jesus warning, you know, if, I, if I've knocked on that, that person's heart, the door, uh, I've been called by the Lord, I know the word, you know, what's contained in the Bible, but not necessarily literally the external words of the Bible, but the deeper meaning. So I've known the word, Jesus has knocked, I said yes, and then I bonded to the external world. And the door was never unlocked. The heart was never opened. But I did change. I became like the group called, you know, religion. And um, I didn't realize, and this is a repentance Rima issue, Rima thing, that you can, you know, uh, let this wash over you. I didn't realize my mistake. But now I see maybe there's another another thing the Lord was trying to do with me and now I'm ready to you know come out of the external world and into the ecclesia or inner world of the Lord and meet him you know there on his turf called the kingdom of God and uh, do it his way which is internally, because it's an internal relationship. The relationship is in our hearts, in our souls. The external world, the body that we have, is simply a way for the soul to experience this life. Otherwise, it would be like, you know, like, like demons and, and aliens and stuff. They, they need a body. They can't just come in here. Because it's it's just it's their, their frequency rate and the th rate here, it's too dense here. They can't manifest here. They need to take. So we get a body from God, obviously, and a soul, and it's and we're born. Um, but what they have to do is they have to commandeer a body. So the the battle here is there's this ongoing program, and I've seen it when I was you know like when I was sixteen. Um, I can't really explain this, but. I would see these kids go into this factory kind of thing, you know, call it Mind Control Central, you know, and they would get scalped. You know, what would happen is they'd be very troubled kids, they'd be very relatable to and troubled with all, all these questions, and uh, then they would get fixed one by one. Something was taken out of them and something was inserted in and they became part of the hive. And then they were fit to then go on to college and you know, whatever, take their part as perfectly possessed individuals. Well, what's happening there is that they give up, or they've been broken down, and their spirit is broken by the world, and then they give up to, you know, the world system or to the external Babylon. A lot of times these people then go become church members, and they ended up taking over the churches. So... You know, it's it's kind of like invasion of the body snatchers, you know, and it, it doesn't go on like that forever, but it's, the temptation is, well, what if I could, I mean, let's look at it, let's have some, I have compassion, believe me. What I'm trying to do is 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 not tell you my personal 
you know, angst. I don't really care that much. If pe people choose the devil or they don't, I'm not, it's, I'm not going to hate you for it. At all. I think Rich had something about Marilyn Manson mourning his mother in a song. I didn't watch it, but I was like, well, heck, I'd buy the guy a beer. I got no thing with Marilyn Manson. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with him. I, I hope he, he works out for him. I, I don't have a, I'm not, I don't have a vested interest here because today at least, you know, because sometimes I do get angry at things. But today, right now, in the spiritual realm, I don't have, I, the, the, the right response is, um, I guess, to anybody or anything when you're in that spiritual realm. And there is no personal animus against Obama or any, I'm trying to think of anyone I've been angry with or any of these people, you know what I mean? There just isn't because it, this world is not our home. And the people that have been, you know, falling into the material realm and worshiping that as God or becoming an icon themselves to be worshiped or whatever the game is, the external Babylon world. I think Deborah put it very well in her email. The external Babylon world, um, it's more natural to sow to that than sow to the spirit. Because we sow to the spirit, well, you don't get any goodies. That's one, one thing for sure. You're an oddball then, you know. And um, you're not going to be able to cash in on the external Babylon um, sinking ship of the, you know, which is just uh, another great metaphor would be the Titanic. <laughs> you know, you don't get to go rearrange the deck chairs or be, you know, or be a, a rock star as the band played on whilst they went down. Um, it's going down anyway, whether, whether you like it or not. It's just on a slow timer. And um, we, the solution to it all, is the spiritual realm, obviously. The Lord is within, the kingdom is within. You don't need churches or mosques or, you know, temples or Buddhas or Bodhisattvas or, you know, Messiahs or anything like that. You know, I went, oh, so what about Messiah Jesus? Well, Messiah Jesus is really you in the end. You know, I mean, no matter how you slice it, you're not going to be separate from God, Right? as the Lord Jesus is not separate from God, right? I am not separate from God. Jesus is not separate from me. I'm not separate from him. All of this has gone on within me with no need of an external, you know, rabbi or pope or anything. Period. I think that's the real key here. And You know, they even made a movie. I mean, getting to more, you know making this a little bit different and, you know, making this a little more entertaining. Because we're dealing with the subjects that's really heavy, I understand that. Everyone's worried about whether they're right with the Lord or not. Um, there was this movie, Stigmata, with Patricia Arquette some years ago, and I, I saw it recently, and I was really surprised to, to, that the whole premise, you know, and it, it argue, arguably maybe not the best movie, but I love movies like that. So you see, I'm not looking for the best execution of, of, of a uh, genius screenplay. I'm just looking for, you know, something going on. And there's definitely something going on there. The point of the movie was to say the kingdom of God is within you. They were making a big deal out of the, you know, Dead Sea Scrolls or some kind of discovery of some text that said that. And I'm like, have you ever heard of Luke 17:21? I mean, it's in the Bible already, guys. Come on. You screenwriters can't be that stupid. Now, I just, look, I overlooked that because I want the entertainment, okay? I like it. I liked her in the movie. I liked that uh, Gabriel Byrne guy in the movie. I really, I really liked it, okay? Um, I liked some of the effects that were going on. I, I was just like, I just, you know, it was, it, 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 it's my kind of thing. So there I am. And then it all sums down to this one concept that the kingdom of God is within you. And that was a big threat to the Catholic Church at the, in, in the movie. And even though that's written in the Bible in many places, you know, I mean, directly in Luke 17, 21, but in others like John 17, it's also there. It's also, it's, 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 it's basically the whole story of Christ within us. The door, many are called, few are chosen. 
depart from me, I never knew you. Um, you know, come, come out of her, my people, and be separate. You know, on and on and on and on and on and on. And the Lord, you know, if you belong to the Lord, then you are separate. That he does separate you. He does break you. He does discipline you. Those of you suffering right now, uh, you know, I'm not having the best time either. I mean, looking at the world, which is kind of a, a bummer. I've got lots of blessings and, 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 and all that. And I've got my challenges as well. Uh, but overall, there's this thing hanging over us all, isn't there? No one of us is going to get away a better than anyone else. We can't take anything with us. You know, the thing that's hanging over us all is death, isn't it? In other words, an end to the opportunity to serve God, to get on with it. An end, and then as I watch myself get older and I watch skills I had kind of fading away, I must sow to the Spirit to have peace. I must be in the Spirit to have peace. I must be in the Spirit and bring you this podcast to have peace myself. And I must share this with you when the Spirit hits, because I didn't know when it's going to hit. I'm, I'm, I've got my window open here. I have the sea breeze coming in. Yeah, there's no one here for miles and miles. There's, you know, it's completely empty. And uh, there are wild horses wandering around. I mean, it's a real blessing to see it, but, but the, if I just think about the external world of all that, I get sad because I realize, well, this experience will be over in a few days. The horses will be, will die. You know, soon they're going to ban this beach from anybody driving a 4x4. Four four. You can imagine, right? What should be, you know, just in a side statement here, what should be normal, i.e., when I was a boy, we could drive cars on the beach in California. And we ran our dogs. I remember uh, uh, when the whole hippie thing was happening and there was Topanga Canyon. People lived on the beach in these shacks on the beach. Shacks. And all the dogs were wild, running every hither and yon, and people were having their love-ins and surfing and having bands and smoking dope and this whole scene of Topanga Canyon. And I was a little—I was probably about five years younger than the people that were in the scene, but it was a scene nonetheless. And um, it all turned out to be phony and you know ridiculous and you know faded out. Well, what ended up happening in Topanga Beach, which was a beautiful, beautiful area. And a beautiful beach, and a, and a beautiful, it was a beautiful thing. These, these guys were living there on very low rent on the beach. Are you kidding? And, and these rundown shacks in the most primo real estate of all, and they're sitting there having their one, one ongoing movable feast party that's going on indefinitely. And uh, anyway, so here's what happened they made it a state park, they, uh, or a, a county park. I'm not sure if it's state or county, but they bulldozed all the houses bulldozed it all, and they banned all dogs from the beach. And, of course, banned any kind of driving your vehicle on the beach. You know, that they banned it all. And they banned the vehicles on beaches before that, actually. And, um, and now, uh, I used to be able to take my dogs on a leash down the beach. Now they're banned from being on a leash on the beach. And um, the next step, of course, is to, once the pets are banned, they're, they're going to ban humans from being on uh, a lot. The, you know, there, there won't be beach access. There'll be beach restrictions. Uh, and, and, you know, until there's really almost nowhere in, 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 in this nation, except a couple of places, can I think, where you drive. Here, there are no roads. It, the only way to get here to this, this house I'm in uh, that we've, we've we have for a week here. I, the only way I could even get here was a four wheel drive, and to lower my tire pressure down to twenty pounds. And still, I had a hard time, you know, because the puddles have been raining, and we got these huge puddles, and just they're like sand roads, and you have to kind of get around the puddle and go. You know, you're you're four by fouring it, and there's wild horses, and then there's this house. And they have people that work on the house and stuff. They all have trucks that could go on the sand. But it's, there is no road here. It's marvelous, okay? It's, but why? The, what I'm getting out of it is this. It doesn't matter where I am. You know, I'm just doing this because I'm, you know, I was led to do it. I did it last year. It reminds me to talk to you about, you know, the way it was here. And the fact that they're restricting everything and, and I, I just, oh, a new thing this year. 
first year they restricted ATV vehicles on the beach here. You have to have a permit now. And they're chipping away at it. What they want to do is, of course, they want to ban the whole coastline and you know from, from people except who live here and then eventually bulldoze it all and move people somewhere else. And uh, they have been 100% successful. So I assume they'll be successful the rest of the way, which is to restrict humans from anywhere or any, touching anything or, or being in anything but a cage. Just like the Jimi Hendrix song, Third Stone from the Sun. I hear you get people living in cages. Well, he, he might have been referring to jails back then. But what I'm thinking about at cages is I'm thinking, you know, yeah, people literally living in, in prearranged cities. Um, you know, st- rack them and stack them like the, the, the futuristic dystopian stories uh, of science fiction stories where people are stacked into these uh, inhuman 200 square foot or 100 square foot little cells and they basically go to work and back to their cell. And uh, for, for example, in the movie Dread, which was from the comic book Judge Dread, in Dread, it was ra- the, the cities were all rack them and stack them. So they're seeing this in the future. And it's a very bleak future where, you know, the dogs are not allowed at Yellowstone. Dogs are not allowed on the trails. You know, dogs, um, you know, four by four might threaten some, you know, obscure worm somewhere uh, in one small area, you know. So there's, so those opportunities have dried up. What I was saying to someone the other day was, you know, the fact we have to drive 10 miles in the sand, which takes time too, especially at high tide, and there's obstacles. I mean, you could get stuck. There's, things could happen to you. Well, thing is, this used to be the way it was in America. You know, kind of, you know, you're on it, you know, things were adventurous. The way it's become is, you know, and, and where, where, I, you might ask, do these people, do they get the authority and the power to restrict all the coastlines and, and public parks from human use. Who are they that they, <clears throat> and I can tell you this, they are above the law. They do not require laws, or even or, and if they want something passed, they get it passed. They um, are not human, is the, the other con- conclusion. Ultimately, I mean, they're, they're um, soulless, that they've been taken over. Most politicians are taken over by a demonic entity and, and, and told what to do. And they do what they're told because their soul isn't there to fight back. That's sad. You know, it's really sad. But the Lord assures me, they had it, every one of these people had a chance and a choice to make. And they chose the external Babylon world and, you know, they chose to be extracted. And, it's, you know, in a sense, it's like a walk-in, isn't it? You know, walk in, they, they were going to, you know, like the Kevin Spacey movie, K-Pack. Uh, so those beings, when he was on another planet, where are those beings? They couldn't come here directly as beings. They could not manifest because this world is too dense, but they said their world is dense like this one in a way. So how, the, the only way that they could come here, the aliens in K-Pack, was to possess Kevin Spacey or his character. That was like a glaring plot point. I said, does anyone notice what they're talking about here? This was about a guy who wanted to kill himself, played by Kevin Spacey. Someone very, very, you know, uh, distraught and and, uh, on the verge of suicide. Right when he's about to kill himself, uh, this entity steps in and takes over. And he became a whole different person with property, magical properties and powers, and he rose right to the top of his game instantly. But it wasn't him. It was this entity from another planet. It was laid out perfectly. How could people miss that? It, it wasn't like, if it was someone from another planet, they would just come here and however they looked, they would appear. They did not. They t- had to take over a body to be here. So this alien demon thing, AD, this AD thing, D, D, or DA, D, demon alien, whatever, um, 
it now takes on properties of aliens and military industrial. Well, the military industrial complex is in bed with this thing, the AD. And um, what this thing wants is um, a conquering of the human and to use the human as a fit extension for their own through genetic manipulation, which they've done and they continue to do, to, to make the human a fit extension so they can live through the human. That's the point. The point is we're not, we, they, they do not intend us to inhabit our bodies. They intend us to be extracted. And then inserted would be another person that would then live. Now, I became aware of this, like I said, when I was 16. Because I saw it happening with my friends. That the other friends who remained, like Kevin Spacey, i.e. on the verge of killing himself, very troubled, horrible event happened in his life. You know, he, he, the, in, the, in the film K-Pax, and he wanted to, to die. He was just so broken, and, and there's just no hope for him. And uh, so those friends remained on like that, you know, broken, desultory, um, you know, depressed or whatever. And then eventually they died. And the other ones got, the other kids, they got extracted and inserted and taken over, and that's who they are today. I saw it happen, and it was being, and who was running it? Who was running it? Off-world entities, the aliens, were running the whole show. Yeah, okay, the CIA, the aliens, whatever. You know, the, that whole thing that you look at there is... Uh, we're facilitating that that uh, that on a global basis, just like the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the same exact thing. And then once they were extracted, then inserted, they then conformed. They 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 their 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 dress got different. They if they were fat, they lost weight. If they they did, they became kind of the best they could be. You know, like if you join the army, what they expect, they can build your character up. They became the best they could be. <laughs> they, uh, you know, they, they had silent um, telepathic communication with each other at that point. And they, the humans on Earth, I'm talking about the humanity here. And then they went on uh, with their lives and they would attack anyone who wasn't like them, i.e., you know, operating uh, via a remote power. And anyone that wasn't on the same page with them, they would then attack. And that's called persecution. And that's what we've had today. There are some people that just cannot be, and, and really, you know, even if I said, okay, go ahead and take me, I would want to fight because there's just a survival instinct in me that wants to fight. Not everyone has that, I realize. And it's not across the board either. Who's intact and who isn't is anybody's guess. But those who um, go on the, uh, the open road, as Robert Plant put it, uh, wind up in this category of being scalped. You know, the Bible explains the open road or the, or the, wide, the big wide path about wide way. Jesus explained it like this. The open road is the road to destruction and the narrow path is the path to eternal life. The open road, um, you know, the thing about that is, again, the people are not really there. And I've seen the manifest. There, there's a semblance of the person. Their ego is still there. Their spirit is still there. It's just something is missing and something has been added. And I don't know how a person gets out of it. I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at some people who are trying to, uh, you know, get free by going with the New Age gurus and they're doing this and doing that and they're trying to uh, deal with this thing. I know that, uh, you know, uh, one of my favorite all-time, you know, Artists, I guess, was Jimi Hendrix and, and that whole concept of that three-piece band and everything. And I, um, I know he was struggling with it. You know, I know that he had, he had you know, because the world has a way that, that 
seems right to a man, as the Proverbs say, and it leads to death. It's just the most damnedest thing. It's, it's terrible. And uh, Jesus offers a way that seems just awful in the, in the beginning. And um, the people don't want that because they don't want to become monks, you know, and just kind of ascetics and fanatics and whatnot. And, um, you know, and social pariahs, which they all become, okay, instantaneously. Thank you very much. Nobody wants to become that. Much ra more, they would rather just be kind of have a good time, you know. I mean, why be here to suffer? Uh, the age old... You know, it's just frustrating all around. And hey, if, I, if it were my world, folks, seriously, listen to my heart for a second. If it were my world, I'd save everybody today. Because I think if you're saved, you won't do evil anymore. I mean, I mean, I, I, I would make sure that salvation means you don't do evil anymore. <laughs> you, just, you just stop with this world because it's irrelevant. I would, I would save them all the way to that point, to where this world is now irrelevant. We can all go as you know, kumbaya, brothers and sisters, off to the next realm, which will be way better than this, and everyone's happy. I love it. Happiness to all people. Abundance to everybody and irrelevance to this world, but the next world comes bopping on in. We jump into the next realm. Everything is just amazing. You know, just an ongoing, whatever it is that makes you happy, but even better than that could ever be. Constantly, and having nothing but joy and laughter coming from everywhere at all the time with all humans that were ever conceived, period. Going all the way back to Adam. And just wake up from this nightmare, we're back home, and we appreciate it so much now because we saw the alternative, and now we know that, that you know, that there's no struggle to be sinful or not sinful, no hatred, no them or us. There's none of that anymore. It's all good. All the tears are dried. Everything is perfect. Everything is just awesome, right, Trish? Everything is awesome. <laughs> so everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. So it's just, that would be me. Rather than all this pain and suffering and all this, you know, this, 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 this hardship of, you know, being on one side or the other at war with each other. And, and, you know, you don't know who's in, who's out, who's scalped, who's not. And it's just really... Um, got to really rely on the Lord for every step you make because it's a dangerous world. You never know. You know, I've got another friend who, you know, the top of his game or whatever, you know, he gets a hit and run. And, and then he's in therapy every day trying to get over a brain injury and struggling with that. And, and you know, it's just, it's really made him focus. on. I think probably, you know, he's got to relate to himself more as a spirit now being but I mean he'll be okay you know he's, he, there'll be a miracle I, I predict in his life or many or several something's going to happen there in a positive way but you know he it's a suffering thing you know I'm suffering certain things you know other people are suffering certain things people don't have enough to eat people don't have medicine the medicine's poison they're trying to float these various designer diseases out there on us you've seen it in the news it's you know, the politicians all lie while they're stealing all your money and now they're telling you that, you know, the banks are not lending people money anymore but yet they, they took all the tax money to bail themselves out and now they won't even give you a loan. It's, I, I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry. But if I drop my guard here, I would cry for the rest of my life every day, all day long. There'd be nothing to do but cry and wail and moan and, and, just, and, and just be devastated and traumatized until finally there weren't any more tears. And even then, you know, all the tears in the world would not be enough to make up for all the evil that's been done to people. So the only thing we've got, folks, is this offer of Jesus, really, to overcome and to 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 wed with him and to go into the eternal realm of the new Jerusalem the, the, the next phase the the point of this whole incarnation that we are about to embark on this other this this perpetual i guess this continual journey because it's on to the next thing and we and we just have to go through it
and finish this up and go to the next realm, realizing that the suffering we're doing here physically has nothing to do with the spirit. The spirit, we're perfect. We're whole. We're joyous. Everything is, is done. And, and, and the Lord wants us to identify with that because that's really the, the thing that will feed us and nurture us and bring us to healing. This other stuff here, and I'm watching the fighter jets going by. Yeah, well, see, we, we have those here. Right, being so close to all these military bases and everything else. Yeah, military is in the business of death. It's a big deal. I'm, no, I'm not tired. I'm just I'm yawning because I'm I'm at the seashore, and it's just that that air constantly um, for at least a couple of days. It gets me like that. I wish I had something instant fix for you in your terms. But our terms, uh, our anthropocentric terms, are just not qualified to be um, considered reliable. I'm sorry. They are subjective and, and without truth, really. The truth is, um, we misunderstand this life and its purpose. And um, we don't really want to understand it. We want to identify with, with you know, that which makes us feel good, which is really the, the thing that's most familiar, which is the outside world. And um, I told you there was a song by Soundgarden to blow up the outside world. I wonder what they were thinking about with that. But I mean, it, to me, it seemed like there was definitely, a, you know, they're, they're in an us and them thing when they wrote that song. But it's very interesting. There is no blowing up the outside world. There is no... Um, getting rid of, you know, they want to get rid of uh, veterans and constitutionalists and whatever. The, and this is showing up in milita U.S. military and policy manuals. And I'm like, since when are patriots of, you know, of the country, are God-fearing Americans, um, the enemy, the law-abiding citizens, since when are they the enemy? And, you know, it, it, it's uh, a great betrayal. The, the U.S. has... Um, you know, uh, made its citizenry grab its ankles and bend over and, and, and basically ream them, and that's what they've done. You know, they've done this to every American, and that they've betrayed the American. America has turned on itself and betrayed its people, and the people uh, that are in power are the ones who have done the backstabbing, and they put a big knife in the back of every American. They've turned around and um, destroyed their own people for their own selfish little disgusting gain. And I th that's why I can't look at a Bill Clinton or a Hillary or Obama or George W. Bush or any of the Bushes or the Cheneys or any, any of these people that are in the public eye and all the rest of them, the neocons and the, the George Soros leftists and all the rest of it. I can't watch. I can't watch. To me, it's just one big B-E-T... R-A-Y-A-L. That's all they represent to me. They're, they're just betrayers and liars. And um, I don't want to play their game. I don't want to be in their, in their world. I don't want to be in their, uh, in their comic comedy show. I'm not interested. I have to look at nature now. It's so beautiful and so wonderful, and I'm, you know, I have to look at nature as a metaphor for the internal kingdom, and then I'm happy. You see what I mean? Because it's not, then it's no longer fading away from me. I'm happy because I know I am eternal, I have always, I have always been, and I always will be. I know I wasn't just born, you know, coming to consciousness in the womb that one time, unless, unless it's something like, I came to consciousness that one time, okay, as a body, that when I went out, I went dark, went to sleep, and there is no more consciousness. It just, I just go, the energy transfers to another being, and another being, and another, and we're all caught up. And if you want me to say reality is that, sure, there, you can make a good case for that. Justified by the fact that there's only one supreme being, you know, I am, and there is nothing else. So if we accept that, then we accept that if I die, I go to sleep, something else awakens, something else. I never die because I'm in all things, is my point. Either way, it's good. Um, 
now about about being on Earth, the external realm. The planets, the sun, moon, the stars are going to become obsolete. Not necessary. They're necess- this realm we're in, this dimension we're in, is necessary for this story to happen now in the way it's happening. We needed this something this dense to happen so we could go through what we're going through. But it's, you know, it's only one one small aspect of the story. And we are, make no mistake, in a story, a supernatural story, a story that changes almost magically daily. And we just need to realize it because manifesting miracles in your life is really about, in a sense, noticing all the things that are going on. Because every five minutes there's a miracle, something that defies logic, something that is not natural, something that is rather supernatural. But we miss them, and we miss them, and we miss them, and we, and we, 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 we assume them away, and we, we don't look anymore, and we, don't, we just feel like victims instead, rather than blown away by the awesomeness of, the, of, of God and the, the, the arbitrariness of this dimension and all the things that happen arbitrary to the extent that the Creator is making these things happen, all of which are defying the natural law and order of things on a, on a moment-by-moment basis because a person can just rise up and walk. Another person can just miraculously heal. Uh, other people, other things like World War III are just canceled. You know, I, I can name 50 things that I've seen in the last few months that, that, are, um, that completely defy the natural order of things that prove that our God is real and conscious and good. You know, if you look, you'll find him. If you seek, you'll find. He's not hard to find, but, I mean, if you find him and then you want to block him out and go with the, uh, the external realm, can't do that. We've got to find peace in the internal realm within us, in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. We've got to find peace, and that peace is Yeshua. That peace is you know, serve God. That peace is, is the Lord. And that and he's the only one that's going to uh, say, Lord, which way? Uh, let's go left rather than right today. Let's do this rather than that, you know. And, and then you see, you obey that for a while, you start seeing the changes. But um, does it make me sad that there's... so many people hurting? I mean, like, like the majority... And they have no idea how to get out of it. That they can't really sing songs anymore because, or they could just phone them in, I guess, but they, because their hearts aren't in it, because they just, that they can't wait to get, you know, out of their religious service and on to something that's real for them. There's nothing real in this world, nothing that will satisfy, you know. You get a new car, it's it's okay for a while, you know, but then it's just a stupid car, you know. It's just, that's just the way, you know, know, I'm sorry, but the physical realm cannot give you what the eternal realm gives you. But I'm expecting, you know, if you like, a mass awakening, you know, with tragedy in the background, Soon. The thing they're worried about, and I've told you this before, and this is the most ridiculous thought of all time, but it's recurring, so I'm going to say it. The reason that you don't see a great, quick nuclear war that just engulfs everything is because, um, or the, I'm sorry, the reason that it, uh, let me start over. The reason that, that a nuclear war would be sudden and swift and over the top is so that people wouldn't have time to repent. Because the big worry right now is if you have any kind of tragedy right now, might wake people up and get them to repent or rather change directions. Repent just means to change directions. Instead of going toward the outer world, you're now into the inner world and the Lord, which is within you, and the kingdom, which is within you. And you need to go there. And that actually becomes the external later on. The internal blossoms. Or if you like, it's like the, the cocoon coming to be a uh, butterfly and then that becomes the unfolding of the truth or the revelation and um, 
it's very exciting, but I could distract you if I got you looking at the external world as something real, something tangible, something you've got to grapple with, and then it gets very heavy and dense and hard because nothing, you know, you push, it pushes back, and it, it's hard to get anywhere, and then finally uh, you break down into sorrow. In the internal realm of the Lord, everything happens instantaneously and is easy. But you have to be there for it to happen, rather than, you know, the case is we're not there most of the time. We're concerned with the external Babylon world. That becomes our world. And all we do is think about that. And then that's, really, that's the long, that, that's kind of the, that, that's the rhema for today. I don't want to confuse it more. But it's really just um, the Lord calling you and choosing you to be his church, to be his 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 light to manifest his light through you and um you know saying yes means that door is open within you to eternal life and you're just kind of you know there you are i mean that's the only place folks that you can actually find peace even as mysterious as it all is and we can't just lay it all out because it can't be laid out with words we can, you know, try to get at it, but it's something that's, that will become understood to you only by and by through life and death and beyond. And even those who get to understand it in this life, there's not much you can say about it. You know, it's just the material realm <laughs> and sort of. I don't want to put down the eagles again. Gosh, that's just, they've just become like, over the years, like, you know, there's certain artists that become, because the, the, because the music is involved in the most propaganda, right? So therefore, they get a little, they get to, you know, have, take a little responsibility in this mind control because they've all been responsible for getting all of us to look exteriorly. I'll just put it nicely, and I'm not going to stoop to their level of, you know, their perverted level. I just, I'll just put it nicely. The external world is, is it, that, that's it. Embrace it with a love embrace, right? Uh, that's, uh, you know, Born to be Wild, John Kay and Steppenwolf. Uh, great band, loved him. John Kay, a weird, weird guy from Germany. I don't know much about him, but he, he was a, a weirdo or from Canada or wherever he was from. But the point is, is that, uh, um, you know, you're either going to embrace the world with that love embrace or embrace the Lord, but you can't do both. And I see, there's been a million ways to say this over the years, but we always get back to the same thing. It's the truth is never, I've tried, you know, as much as I try to, to sugarcoat it sometimes and to make it nicer, put some honey on it, make it an easier thing to swallow, I just can't. It's just, if you have one, you don't have the other. If you got the other, you don't have the one. I mean, I'd rather have the one than the other. But I've got to live with it. Meaning, you know, if I don't have the world, if I take God, I lose the world. If I take the world, I lose God. That's not fair. Why can't I have my cake and eat it too? I don't know. I didn't make the rules up. I don't, you know, Al Pacino's dialogue and the devil's advocate was perfect. He said he gives man natural urges and uh, makes man a, a certain way. He sets all the rules in opposition. That's what he. That was the crux of his speech and to Keanu, the Keanu Reeves character. And um, I love using movies as examples because there's so much truth in them. You know, you have to ferret it out. But there, there you know, definitely moments over the years that are very poignant. And that was one. He sets the rules in opposition. Why the hell did he do that? You know. Here we have man with all these natural instincts. The devil comes along and says, I want to maximize those instincts. Of course, that's going to maximize hell on earth, right? And, may, and mayhem to the hilt. Um, but, but God is saying, uh, the rules are in opposition. You're going to have to tame that flesh. Crucify even that flesh. Put that flesh down in order to ascend to the spirit. 
And the Satanists, I guess, would say, you've got to embrace that world. You've got to embrace that flesh. You've got to maximize out that flesh to the hilt and go with it because that's the greatest pleasure that you're ever going to have. You know, you're here on earth, you might as well do what they do on earth. When in Rome, do what the Romans do, my mother would tell me. And, um, you know, and then, and then the other sort of rallying cry is, we're all one, you know, one for all and all for one. We're all a big hive mind, uh, says the world. And you gotta, if you jump in here, you've got to lose your mind, but you'll gain our mind. So it's cool. You know, in other words, you lose your soul, but you get our collective soul. So that would be a satanic phrase, collective soul, would it not? You'll find, friends, that over the years, this truth here has never changed. There ha I mean, isn't that weird? Most people adapt and change and evolve. It's never evolved, and it's never changed. The 12 years I've been doing it, it's never evolved and it's never changed. It's never evolved, and it's never changed. Don't you find that interesting? 12 years, wow. Now it's like 12 years and two months. <laughs> but isn't that interesting? It doesn't change. It's just, this is just it. The way it is, the hardcore reality, right in our face, and there's nothing we can do to change it. It just is what it is. And I kind of feel relief from that, but I don't like dealing with ignorant people who attack without understanding. You know, who attack because they don't understand. When the problem is within themselves, that's why they attack. We shouldn't want to attack anyone. I don't feel like attacking someone, do you? Well, but people who do attack you. You know, you gotta, you, do you want to attack them? No, you don't want to attack them. But they just have to attack you. Why? Because you represent something that cannot be, that is a threat to their world. And you have to be changed to make it so it's okay for everyone else. And um, God will never allow that to happen across the board. He will simply use that reality to separate his sheep from his goats and, and he'll go on with his story. It's his story. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not my story. If it were me, I'd make all of you happy today. If I were God, it would be just one big party. You know, everything's forgiven, hugs all around, kumbaya, you know, off to the next realm. Uh, I, it would be cool if I was God, huh? But in my total ignorance, I would say a statement like that. In my total ignorance, because I don't have any clue, and I won't until later, what God is really doing. I think it goes to something like this. We need the split. And there's only two things going on here, so it's a split. We need the split to, to, to be manifested in dense physical 3D environment like we have here. There needs to be a split between the light and dark and, you know, all these things, all these contrasts. And, and that's the best I've been able to come up with. I, I, I don't know that it makes it any easier. It doesn't. I know there's a lot of resentment and hatred out there for having been born here on earth and having to put up with all this, you know, life, you know, was just, you know, delivered, you know, for a lot of people, it just disappoints completely. And I'm really sorry. I can feel it in my stomach. I feel it in my chest. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my, I feel the, the just struggle. I'm so sorry that, that it seems so unfair if it were up to me, I would do it differently because I don't like to see people suffer. I wonder, I ask God, is the suffering all necessary, this level of it, of, you know, just all the, you know, I don't even have to mention what it is. I think you all know. And um, I met a lot of people who say they believe in the Lord Jesus. Of course, that's an exterior statement. You know, you show your belief through your eyes, through your, through your countenance, right? through your actions, but it's okay. They say they believe. And yet I know, I sense, okay, I can't prove it, but I sense they, they hate God, that they resent God so much, they hate him so much, that they become 
one of his in a way, but that, that bitter root still, as a way to get close to him, to hate him closer. It, you know, it's really weird. It's, it's this really weird kind of twisted thing, but it goes back to they're very angry at all the strife and struggle. And then, folks, as you get older, you know, you realize, my oh, God, I can't win. I'm not going to resolve everything. There's going to be battles I'm going to lose. I'm not going to be in perfect health, you know. There's, there's just, it's just not quite up to speed here. Things just don't quite deliver. Can we, can we just agree to let things kind of, like, just we're going to have to just stop. You know, it's not Obama's fault, okay? It's not George Bush's fault. It's not Clinton's fault. They're just the three clowns that are up there now. But, you know, it's not the UN's fault. It's not, I'm trying to think, the, the, all the anti-freedom people's fault. It's not the pro-liberty movement's fault. It's not anyone's fault. It's just a sad, sad situation. And, you know, sad to the extent where most humans are unhappy. Now, that is, a, I believe, axiomatic in all of this. I think most humans are terribly unhappy. And the best that the humans that say they're happy have been able to do is survive. And in that, they feel heroic and like, they, like they've got it nailed and they've got it grokked and they, they got the world by the balls and they're going to just do whatever they want. Well, that's fine. But, I mean, they're playing a fool. They're living in a fool's paradise. I got some, some uh, swamp land on the moon to sell them if that's what they think. If they think um, they're not going to be able to turn this piece of crap into caviar, they're not at the expense of everybody else, they're not. Even they, at long last, will reap what they've sown. So to make it work out, man, you know, and it, I, it's not um, my ex-schoolmate uh, Bill Gates' fault. <laughs> you know, he's, he's got, what, $75 billion? It's not his fault. It's not people with money's fault. I think that's always stupid that, you know, they... They dupe all these jealous people to join Occupy Wall Street because they didn't get a fair shake. And of course they didn't. And they want to get at these dang billionaires and zillionaires, not realizing a lot of these zillionaires and billionaires are the very people that, that will produce an Occupy Wall Street for their own political cover. <laughs> Case in point is Soros. Now, I know that I had a banker in L.A. He just loved George Soros. They knew Soros. And they, 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 Soros had a uh, hedge fund with um, this guy. I for, gosh, I forget his name now. Kind of a guy around L.A. I forget his name now. Darn it. But they were taking him very seriously. And they considered Soros a, you know, a really great guy. You know, because they measure greatness on, you know, if you've been really successful out there with me, I don't care. I've been around lots of people with lots of money and I'm, I'm, I've saved this, I see the same thing. There's no, no honor in poverty either. I mean, I see the same distribution or thereabouts with people that are wealthy, um, you know, versus not wealthy. Do I see, are there more people that aren't wealthy? This wealth versus not wealth, uh, how, how many lambs there are. And I, in my growing up, I saw just as many lambs around among the wealthy as I did among the poor. So uh, I know it says that you know money is the root of all evil. I think people that really worship money, um, you know, the material world. Of, of course, it's going to be very hard for them. If, if uh, of course they're not going to go the way of salvation, if that's what they're if they're going to worship money instead. But if if it's not a worshiping money thing. Um, then the distribution's about the same. You know, but there's a lot of people that are really jealous and they want to go get the rich people. And so the devil tricks them into signing on and joining all these hate, hate campaigns. And that's all it is, is a vector for their hate. And then they fail with Jesus. And then the devil goes to the Lord and says, look at these people, they've signed on with the program here to hate the rich and go kill them all. And it's like, okay... You know, um, well, then they fail at Jesus. Depart from me, I never knew you, Jesus says. You're working iniquity. You really just want to use me 
to get the rich. And, and do you forget that Jesus had benefactors plus not only benefactors, but also knew some of the wealthiest people in Jerusalem at the time, Nicodemus being one of them. And um, but there were others, and and you know it's it's really a kind of a mystery as to where his funds came from when you think about it. And he wasn't just working as a carpenter the whole time; he's in ministry. And I don't see that carpentry activity going on very much at all. So who's backing it? <laughs> there had to be somebody. How do you get that upper room down in? Uh, how do you, how do you get the upper room for the Last Supper? So it's not the money people's, you know, fault. You know, I suppose I, you know, could yell at me too, you know, for having being here, you know, rather than um, being tortured in some in some fa apple factory where I could jump out the window and commit suicide. You know, it's not the poor people's fault. It's not the factory worker and all of us. It, it's the fault that we invest all this energy into the external world that and that's what breeds the hatred between the various divisions or classes or whatever um, then the communists come along and say let's confiscate the money and private property from everybody then that would be fair and then we'll be the rich people and then we'll be the oligarchs so all that is is just a transfer from one to another and the same problem exists that's why the Soviet Un Union fell in a, in a nutshell there are other reasons but I mean it fell that way so it, it's not the celebrity's fault. It's not um, you know this general or that general of the Pentagon. It's not uh, France. It's not the communists. It's not the liberals. It's not the conservatives. It's something else. And so when we buy into the external solutions, we always fail because the external solution is just that, an external, ephemeral, non-critical solution cannot fix what's wrong, won't ever fix what's wrong. Wrong paradigm, and it's the wrong question. No, there's not, I'm not saying we don't solve our problems. Of course, we, we have to use logic, intuition, and a lot of other skills to solve problems on a daily basis, and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with working at this job or that. There's nothing wrong with working on Wall Street. There's nothing wrong with being a politician. There's nothing wrong with being an actor in Hollywood. There's nothing wrong with any of this stuff. It's not the fault of these external activities that we are in the shape that we're in. So I've let it go. I see so many Christians who hate... Well, an incident today, I see a guy puts up a... Uh, you know, a friend puts up a thing of... Uh, of, um, you know, uh, Marilyn Manson um, mourning his mother in a song. I think I spoke about this uh, just a second ago. Anyway, he, uh, you know, the response is, oh, he's with the devil, blah, 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 he's going to hell, and, you know, all this other stuff. And, um, well, they fell into the trap, right? It's, it's, it's obviously this Manson guy's fault. No, Marilyn Manson was a, uh, it, it was an act. His name is really Brian, and he's just a guy. And, you know, yeah, I'd buy him a beer, why wouldn't I? I'm not worried that um, you know his his evil of the satanic cunning is going to really get me. I, I wouldn't have that thought at all. I, I, I wouldn't know. I hope we you know have a good conversation about something. I have a feeling we would have a great conversation. But anyway, uh, I saw these people objecting to the idea that he would be mourning or lamenting. I I actually don't know the story completely. I don't know if they're talking about official repentance or I, that never works really where rock stars repent to Jesus publicly, they always get scalped in the end because they don't really understand. They're just <laughs> they're entering into a battle of royale and uh, they, they're not ready for they don't understand. You know, the best way to... Hey, you rock stars, listen to me. The best way for you to, like, to get right is just do it quietly. I'm serious. I'm really serious now. You could come out publicly after you've been, like, on the path for a while, but whatever, there'll be a... Let the Lord make a way for you to do that. Don't just go in, uh, on your own ego, on your own understanding. Just run out there public and go, I'm with Jesus now, everybody, you know, and, and do this whole external song and dance. And then that just opens the door up for a, a, a look. Those of you who know anything at all, I think 
you know, I'm, I'm giving you a little bit of wisdom here. Yeah, you're going to have to understand that half of this battle is being quiet. Yeah. Half of it is carrying that, that load without complaint, hopefully. Some of us do complain. I know I've complained, and I'm sorry for it. But carrying this load, you know, yourself, you know, alone. And uh, the, the, your satanic friends will mock and laugh at you for that. And, and, that's, and accepting that laughter and rejoicing over that laughter or whatever they're doing, that mocking is also a big part of it, that you won't lose, your, not only will you not lose your joy, but you'll love them in return because it's an internal thing that you're, it's the world, not the external. Therefore, you can forgive before it ever happens. You, there's no need to forgive. I mean, it's already forgiven. Why? Because the external is not the world. Therefore, there's no mono a mono grudges. It's a different paradigm. There's two different paradigms here. Therefore, that rule doesn't apply. Eye for an eye doesn't go in the, um, because there are two different realms is why. It's not a virtue on your part. It's because it is not relevant. That's why. That's why the Lord says, you know, vengeance is mine. Because you're not in the world. It's not, you're, you're living in a different kind of, you know, you still have a body and everything, and they might throw rocks at it and stuff, but the solution is not, um, you, you, whether they do that or they, it, they don't is irrelevant. It, it doesn't, it shouldn't matter to you or me. I know, you know, that, that by stoning them right back, you didn't solve any problem because there are two different worlds we're dealing with. You, you can already see that it wouldn't get you anywhere. Well, you know, uh, obviously, if, you know, you're, you're a soldier in the battlefield and they're shooting at you, you shoot back at them. But you do it with your heart in, an, in the internal realm, not the external realm. That's the point I'm trying to make. You can kill as many people as you like. I, you know, that's fine. I don't, I'm not a pacifist. I'm, I, I believe war is, you know, um, war is just, it is like people say, a fact of life. It does happen. And, you know, better, you know, it's, 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 again, people talk about it, though, in external terms, and they bring Jesus into the external, and they say, now, Jesus doesn't want you to shoot anyone, at, you know, in the battlefield. And it's like, um, excuse me, but they're two different paradigms. They have nothing to do with each other. Therefore, no, the soldier, your soldier guy, you're not going to hell. You know, it's just, I don't know. I, um, I'm so frustrated right now. I'm, I'm, I got to stop. I'm just, why, because I can't, I've tried so hard to get these concepts over to you so you'll be at peace. And I just, I see it. There's so much resistance. Do me a favor. Listen to this about five times. Because <laughs> no, not because you're, you know, I'm not saying you're not bright. I'm just saying because I, it's not you I'm mad at. It's that I can see the resistance, how it works, you know, on all of us, not just you. But I've struggled with this too. I'm able to say to you a lot of things that I too need to learn. You know, I might as well be saying it to myself. I, too, need to do all these things. It's not, there's not a burden on you, but really, in the end, there's nothing to do but keep seeing it as it is. But I would hope it would just get to be automatic, wouldn't you? You just are that way. It just is that way. You just see it that way. All right. Okay, let's just say Rayma for today is, you know done it and, and I, you know, let it just, let it just be a peace in your mind and your heart and let it, this, this, this split, this dichotomy thing we face, you know, we didn't put it there, okay? It's not our sin, if you will. Um, we're, 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 the solution is is the inner and outer dimension, you know, the outer 
darkness can never be the solution. And uh, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the one, Yahweh, Elohim, God, the all in all, the creator, the supreme being of all, I bid you farewell, shalom, and I'll see you when I see you. I don't know. After this, I don't know if it'll be next time. Okay.